I use the term midterm, I'm meaning that it requires some additional research and development to get there. It's not available right now, but it does not require a fusion net power producer yet. One of those midterm applications would be the flue gases of a coal plant. You could break those gases down so that carbon could be recovered directly and the oxygen could be released to the atmosphere. To do this, however, you have to be able to recirculate and recover that energy. To do that, that energy has got to be recovered with, and Dr. Ben Eastlin has proposed that we use an MHD generator, magnetohydrodynamic generator, which is a plasma a device that takes energy from plasmas and then use a steam cycle. And since you're not separating everything, you, you can make selective ways of separation, easier ways of separation. So that's one way of getting rid of the greenhouse gases in fossil plants. The systems we have now are proposing to just take this carbon dioxide, the CO2 molecule, and either bury it or do something else with it, but they can't break it down. Here, the carbon is a very valuable product that can be used in fuel cells as a direct generator of electricity for the nuclear fission systems, the ones that are the fission power plants. The radioactive waste can be separated using similar technologies today, since that's a problem of such a magnitude that it's threatening the acceptability of that whole energy source. Fusion involves bringing together light elements to form a heavier element with the release of energy. Is this the reverse of the common fission process that operates in the fission reactors where you split a heavy element into light elements? So we're trying to fuse together these light elements. Now it turns out that elements up through the periodic table up through boron have various fusion reactions. There may be 20 fusion reactions that you can form with those. Okay, we produce a lot of energy, we get a fusion plasma, then you can lower that and make it a higher density to the exact temperature you need to process whatever material you're going to want to handle in the future. There may be a possibility of doing this without reaching fusion. If you could follow what we suggested for handling the greenhouse gases could be expanded so that you had, a, say, a solar plant out in the desert, and that plant produced the electricity that would drive the plasma, and if you could recover sufficient amount of the energy to make it a worthwhile process. Remembering that the total waste that this country produces is about one-third of a quad and we use 100 quad of energy. So it's a very small percentage. What would be more desirable would be to actually use the fusion system because fusion starts out as a plasma and it needs to be a fusion system that doesn't produce neutrons. That can be done in systems that are small and can therefore be developed in a rather rapid fashion. We all know about the states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. But there's a fourth state of matter, plasmas, which is prevalent in the universe because the stars, the sun, everything are composed of plasmas. Because what happens is if you follow solid, liquid, gas, take a gas and you heat it up, keep heating it up. Let's say our atmosphere here has nitrogen in it, oxygen. These are molecules. They're bound together with an electronic bond with an electron. As they get hotter and hotter, they start bouncing back and forth more and finally break. And we end up with atoms which are charged positively and electrons which are negative. And so a plasma is a fluid like sort of a gaseous fluid, but it's held together by these electrostatic, uh, not electro electrodynamic forces of the ions and the electrons, and that's what the sun is. Man has, for 
mil not millions, but many years, sought to make use of the sun's ability to produce heat by fusion. The question is, can we, may, can we some way make a small sun here on Earth that would be a fusion device producing power? To have fusion, we need to have particles coming together, as I said earlier, to fuse together. And to do that, we have to have them very hot so that they have a velocity to come together. And by definition, if it's that hot, it's a plasma. Obviously, you cannot use a material vessel to do it because it would melt. Since the plasma has charged particles in it, ions and electrons, you can use things like magnetic fields and electrostatic fields to suspend it. So let's say we surround the thing with a big magnet, plasma surrounding the grid, and the grid is at a negative potential, so it pulls ions out of the plasma, and they all go toward the center, say in a spherical geometry, and they hit each other and fuse. This concept was proposed by the inventor of electronic television. This has been very elusive. The fusion program has been trying to do this for a number of years. The plasma likes to, it's like a jelly almost, it likes to sneak out of the magnet some way. And we've been finding better and better ways to bottle it up.